Management of Dental Trauma in the Emergency Department. My name is Hans Rosenberg, and in this video, I will be addressing the diagnosis and the treatment of dental luxations. First, we're going to start with some definitions. Subluxation refers to a tooth that is mobile but not displaced. Luxation refers to a tooth that is partially or completely displaced from its socket. The different types of luxations are described as follows. An extrusive luxation is when the tooth appears elongated and is mobile. The treatment is to reposition the tooth by gently reinserting it into the socket. Then you want to stabilize the tooth using a flexible splint. At the end of the video, I will go over in some detail as to how to apply a flexible splint and what the options are in the emergency department. A lateral luxation is when the tooth is displaced in a lingual or labial direction and it will be immobile. The treatment is to reposition the tooth digitally or with forceps if partially impacted and stabilize the tooth using a flexible splint. An intrusive luxation is when the tooth is displaced axially into the bone and is immobile. The treatment is essentially nothing to do. In the emergency department, really there's no intervention necessary. The tooth will be secure and immobile and the definitive treatment is best left in the hands of a dental specialist. Evulsion. So an evulsion is when the tooth is entirely displaced from it, its socket. The treatment is as follows. Now, the management that we are going to talk about is only for permanent dentition. Deciduous teeth, i.e. the ones in kids, should not be reimplanted due to the risk of ankylosis. First, you want to find the tooth and pick it up by the crown, avoiding inadvertent disruption of the periodontal ligament. Depending on the location of the injury, in terms of whether it's out of hospital, out of hospital or in hospital, the management may differ somewhat. Now, dental evulsions are true dental emergencies and are time sensitive. As such, I've tried to start a code tooth in the emergency department, but unfortunately no one in the hospital administration would listen to me. Actually, just kidding. It would be really silly to have a code tooth. But just to reiterate the fact, time is an issue with evulsions. If out of hospital, briefly rinse the tooth with water. At this point, reimplant the tooth, holding it by the crown, and have the patient bite down on a handkerchief. If the patient is unable to do this due to a distracting injury or pain, store the tooth in the patient's mouth under the tongue or in milk. Commercial products such as Hank's Balance Storage Medium are available for use. Avoid storing in water or allowing the tooth to dry. Once in the hospital, the viability of the PDL cells must be ascertained. PDL cells are most likely viable if the tooth was immediately replanted. PDL cells may be viable if the extra oral dry time is less than 60 minutes and the tooth was kept in an appropriate storage media, such as milk, Hank's Balance Storage Solution, saline, or saliva. PDL cells are not viable if the tooth extra oral dry time is greater than 60 minutes. If the tooth has been replanted before arrival to the hospital, leave the tooth in place and stabilize with a flexible splint. If the tooth has not been replanted, clean the tooth with saline ensuring not to rub the PDL. Administer local anesthesia, irrigate the socket with saline, and replant the tooth with slight pressure and apply a flexible splint. In cases where the PDL cells are not expected to be viable, the tooth can be replanted for aesthetic and functional reasons. However, expect the tooth to ankylose and resorption will be the eventual outcome of that tooth and, in the end, loss of the tooth. In terms of applying a flexible splint in the emergency department, there are a couple of options. Once the tooth is replanted, um, the flexible splint can be either something like a product such as you see on the screen there, like Copac. Copac is a commonly available periodontal paste, which essentially what you do is you apply it as follows. You mix the catalyst with the base, then it becomes a sort of putty that you're able to handle in your hand. You then apply to the tooth over the tooth that was evolved as well to the lateral and medial uh, teeth, forming almost a bridge. In addition, you can also place it across the gingiva in order to have more stability. Now, if you don't have Copac available in your emergency department, there is a method using 
tissue adhesive, or 2-OCA, which has been described. The way to do this is the 2-OCA is applied to the medial, lateral edges of the tooth that was evolved, as well as the gingiva. The flexible metal bridge from an N95 mask or something similar is cut to size so that it bridges across both the evolved tooth and the medial and lateral tooth. Then you apply tissue adhesive to the teeth as well as to the flexible splint and put it in place. The patient should then be referred to a dentist for a bonded splint that can last for two weeks as per recommendations. If you want to review in a, in an actual video of how to place a flexible splint, I would suggest going to thedentalbox.com backslash movies backslash copac underscore application. And there you'll be able to uh, see the videos which are uh, very well done and clearly show how to use the materials and how to apply it. Now before we finish, a few tips. First, just want to ensure that I reiterate the fact that the fragment or the evolved, the luxated tooth, I should say, uh, should be accounted for, so especially aspiration. In addition, all avulsions should be given prophylactic antibiotics, either PEN-V or doxycycline for pen allergic patients. And that's all for management of dental luxations in the emergency department, and we will continue with one more video in this series. Bye-bye.